and eyes. Stanley stood in the shower and let the cold water pour over his cot and sour body. It was four minutes of heaven. For the second day in, in a row, he didn't use soap. He was too tired. There was no roof on the shower building, and the walls were raised up six inches of the ground except in the corners. There was no drain in the floor. The water ran out under the walls and evaporated quickly in the sun. He put on his clean stout on orange cloth. He returned to his tent, put his dirty cloth in his crate, got out his pen and bought a stationery and headed to the rack room. The sign on the door said, Rack room. Nearly everything in the room was broken. The TV, the pinball machine, the furniture. Even the people looked broken. With their worn out bodies sprawled over the various chairs and sofas. Every and armpit were playing pool. The surface of the table reminded Stanley of the surface of the lake. It was full of bumps and holes because so many people had carved their intel initials into the, the felt. There was a hole in in the far wall, and an electric fan had been placed in front of it. Cheap air conditioning, at least the fan worked. As fan made his way across the room, he tripped over the outstretched leg. Hey, watch it! said an orange lump on the chair. You watch, muttered Stanley, the tired to care. What do you say? said the ump pump demanded. Nothing. Nothing, to Stanley. The rump rose. He was almost as big as Stanley and a lot together. A lot tougher. You said nothing. Something. He poked his fat finger in Stanley's neck. What do you say? A crowd quickly formed around him. Be cool, Ethry. He put his hand on Stanley's shoulder. You don't want to mess with the caveman, he warned. The caveman's cool, said Armpit. I'm not looking for trouble, Stanley said. I'm just tired, that's all, the lump grunted. Ethry and Armpit left Stanley over a couch. Stanley and Squid still slid over to make room, and Stanley sat down. Did you see the car caveman back there? Akri asked. The caveman won tough dude. The squid and he lightly punched Stanley's arm. Stanley leaned back against the torn vinyl opposedly. Despite his shoulder, his body still showered his body still radiate heat. I wasn't trying to Start anything, he said. At least thing he wanted to do after killing himself all day on the lake was to get in fight with a boy called the caveman. He was glad Akri and Armpit had come to his rescue. Well, he, how do you like your first toll? asked Squid. Stanley groaned and the other boy laughed. Well, the first hole the hardest. Hardest, said Stanley. No way, said Ethry. The second hole's a lot harder. You are hurting before you even get started. If you think you are there now, just wait and see how you feel tomorrow morning. Right? That's right, said Squid. Plus, the fu fun's gone, said Ethry. The fun, yes, Stanley. Don't lie to me, said Ethry. I bet you always wanted to. Dig a big hole, right? Am I right? Sally had never really thought about it before, but he knew better than tell to tell Afra he wasn't right. Every kid in the world wants a dig a great big hole, says Afra, to China, right? Right, says Stanley. See what I mean, says Afra. That's what I am. Say what I'm saying.
but now the fun's gone, and you still got to do it again and again and again. Can't fun and game, says Stanley. What's in the box? asked Squid. Stanley had forgotten he had brought it. A uh, paper. I was going to write a letter to my mother. Your mother? laughed Squid. So she'll worry if I don't. Squid scowled. Sally looked around the room. This was the one place in camp where the boys could enjoy themselves, and what they do, they erect it. The glass and TV smashed as if someone had put his foot through it. Every table and chair seemed to be missing at least one leg. Everything leaked. He waited to write the letter until after Squid had gotten up and joined the game of pool. Dear Mom, today was my first day at camp, and I've already made some friends. We've been out on the lake all day, so I'm pretty tired. Once I pass the swimming test, I'll get to learn how to water ski. I... He stopped writing as he became aware that somebody was reading over his shoulder. He turned to see Zero standing behind the couch. I don't want her to worry about me, he explained. Zero said nothing. He just stared at the letter with a serious, almost angry look on his face. Stanley slipped it back into the stationary box. Did the shoes have red axes on the back? Zero asked him. It took Stanley a moment, but then he realized Zero was asking about Clyde Livingston's shoes. Yes, I did, he said. He wondered how Zero knew that. Rand X was a popular brand of sneakers. Maybe Clyde Livingston made a call Mr. Submission for them. Zero stared at him for a moment, but the same intelligent intent intensity with which he had been staring at the letter. Stanley poked his finger through a hole in the finely cut and pulled out some of the stuffing. He was aware of what he was doing. Come on, caveman, dinner, said Armpit. You, you coming, caveman, said Squid. Stanley looked around to see that Armpit and Squid were talking to him. Uh, sure, he said. He put the piece of stationery back in the box, then got up and followed the boys out to the tables. The lump wasn't the caveman. He was. He shrugged his left shoulder. It was better than barf bag.